Let's talk about sadness. Nobody likes to feel sad. But I want to encourage you that God can use sadness or sorrow to make us better people. The first thing to note here is that everyone will experience sadness. Sadness is emotional pain that results from any kind of personal loss. And the intensity of the sadness usually goes along with the greatness or the extent of the loss that we experience. Now we can feel sad over all kinds of losses, material things, uh, opportunities, all kinds of things, but the greatest sorrow usually comes from the loss of a close relationship or the loss of a loved one. Now, sadness has a lot of different nuances, a lot of different angles as expressed in the richness of the English language for this word. Sadness can be melancholy or grief. It can be disappointment, loneliness, homesickness, sorrow, anguish, discouragement or despair. All of those are elements of sadness. But sadness is different from depression. Depression is, especially when we talk about clinical depression, is a serious disease that requires medical attention. But sadness is the emotion that we're all going to feel at different times and to different extents in our lives when we experience loss. Now, with that in mind, I want you to understand that sadness or sorrow can be good and bad. On one hand, sadness can be sinful because our sense of loss could be related to selfish patterns in our life or self-centered goals that we've had. Or it could be the result of just loving the wrong things in life. But the Bible gives us many examples of godly people who experience sorrow. One of them is Hannah, a woman in the Old Testament who was sorrowful because she was not able to bear children. And you can see her response in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. So you see, her sadness moved her to turn to God for an answer. Another example is Jeremiah the prophet, who was deeply anguished over the downfall of Israel caused by the hands of the Babylonian Empire. And we read his sorrow in the book called Lamentations. I've cried until the tears no longer come. My heart is broken. My spirit is poured out in agony as I see the desperate plight of my people. Little children and tiny babies are fainting and dying in the streets. Now, a few verses later, Jeremiah also expressed trust and confidence in God, even though things were as bad as they were. And so, sorrow can be good if it leads us to greater dependence on God, but it could be bad if it leads us to push God away during those difficult times. Now, Jesus also experienced sorrow many times, including on the night before he was crucified. And we read about that in Matthew chapter 26. Jesus told his followers, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Now the Bible tells us that Jesus never sinned and so his sadness was not selfish. In fact, it was the fitting response to the world's sin that required Jesus to give up his life on the cross the next day. So sadness can be good because God can use it to fulfill his greater purposes in our lives. And that leads to our next point, that God can use your sadness to transform you. You know, the Bible shows us a lot of people who are very open about their sorrow. The Bible never encourages us to fake joy. Look at Psalm 69. I am exhausted from crying for help. My throat is parched. My eyes are swollen with weeping, waiting for my God to help me. You see, if we deny or minimize our sadness, then we could actually stand in the way of what God wants to do in our lives through that experience. There's four things the Bible says God wants to do through sadness. Number one is God can use sadness to help us understand how greatly we need Him. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. Secondly, God can use sadness to help you purify what you value. Because when you lose things, it helps you evaluate what kind of things in the world really are worth mourning over. And then third, God can use sadness to enlarge your soul. When you embrace sorrow and let God work through it, then it will make you a wiser, deeper, a richer, more compassionate person. And then fourthly, God can use sadness 
to help us develop greater dependence on Him. And we see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. This passage compares the losses that we endure in this life to the suffering and the death of Jesus. And so when we're under, undergoing loss and sorrow, it says we're sharing in the death of Jesus. The result of that then is that we also get to share in Jesus' powerful, abundant resurrection life. And so through loss and through sorrow, then we see the life of Jesus, the supernatural life of Jesus, revealed more and more fully in our lives. Now, many people respond to loss by running away from God or getting angry with Him. But others have learned to respond to their grief as they've embraced it, embracing sorrow and loss and pain as a gift from God because God uses sorrow to radically transform our lives. Now, there's one last thing I want you to understand about the emotion of sadness, of sorrow, is that God can use you to help other people with their sorrow. The Bible calls us to have empathy with those who are sad. Look at Romans chapter 12. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. See, we're called to enter into each other's emotional life, both in times of happiness and joy, as well as times of sorrow and grief. And as we do, God will use this in other people's lives. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. So be willing to embrace your own sorrow because of what God can do in your soul through it and be willing to engage in the sorrow of others because of what God can do in their lives through you.